All right, here's the video for Chapter 4, Section 3, Distinguishing Among Atoms. So the first the, or the real thing that is used to distinguish among different kinds of atoms is the atomic number. Because elements are different because they contain different numbers of protons. So it's the atomic number, the number of protons that are, is going to tell you what element you're looking at. So the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So, for example, hydrogen has an atomic number of one. Therefore, it has one proton. So atomic number of one, one proton, that's what makes it hydrogen. Another example is oxygen. Its atomic number is eight. So it has eight protons. And that's how it is for everything. Helium has an atomic number of two. So helium has two protons. Another important number when dealing with atoms is the mass number. And a lot of time I'll use these interchangeably. The mass number is equal to the atomic mass for any given atom. And the mass number is the total number of protons plus the total number of neutrons because Protons and neutrons each have an atomic mass of one, so when you add them up, they give you the total mass of an atom, which is the mass number. So if you need to calculate the total number of neutrons in an atom, the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. So let's look at oxygen, for example. So in oxygen, the atomic number is 8. The mass number is 16. So if we're going to calculate the mass number minus the atomic number, we find that 16 minus 8 is equal to 8. So there are 8 neutrons in an atom of oxygen. Now, a lot of time, or you'll frequently see it written in a shorthand notation, right? If you hear, so, hear me or anybody refer to something like oxygen 16, for example, that means the atom of oxygen that has a mass of 16, it'll be written like this. The O for the oxygen down at the bottom here is the atomic number of 8 for oxygen, which is kind of redundant. You don't have to necessarily put that there. But then the 16 up top over here would be the atomic mass. So this would tell you 16 minus 8 is 8, so there's 8 neutrons. This could also be written as O with just the 16 here as well, because the fact that it's O oxygen means that it has to have an atomic number of 8. All right, more on atomic mass. The atomic mass unit was determined by a scientist took a carbon-12 atom and defined an atomic mass unit as one-twelfth the mass of that carbon-12 atom. And then based on that, they said that the mass of one proton is equal to the, oops, sorry about the misspelling here, the mass a S S of one neutron, which is equal to one AMU. Now, if you look at the periodic table, you'll see, for example, when you look at carbon and you look at the atomic mass for carbon, in fact, if you want to take out your reference table and look at it now, you'll see that it doesn't simply say 12, that it says something more like 12.011 or the like. Now that doesn't mean that any single carbon atom has a mass of 12.011. And that brings us to what is called isotopes. Now when you're dealing with isotopes, you'll find that atoms and isotopes of an atom or of an element are atoms with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. So if we look at this example down here in the picture, Right, these are all neon because they all have 10 protons. Right, because that number of protons, same as the atomic number, that makes it neon. But here you have neon 20 has 10 neutrons, neon 21 has 11 neutrons, neon 22 
has 22 neutrons. And they get that number here, right? 10 plus 12 is 22, neon 22. 10 plus 11, 21, neon 21. And 10 plus 10 is 20 for neon 20. Another common example is hydrogen, right? You can have hydrogen one, which you have just the one proton, the one electron out here around it. You can also have hydrogen two, which in the nucleus is going to have one proton and one neutron. Hydrogen two is referred to as deuterium. And you can also have hydrogen three, tritium, which always still just one proton, but now it has two neutrons. Okay, these are called isotopes of hydrogen in the same way that these are isotopes of neon. Now, when I referred to on the reference table the way it said like carbon, it would say a mass of 12.011, that has to do with the what's called the weighted average mass. Because in nature, most elements occur as a mixture of isotopes. Okay? And the mass number that's on the periodic table is what's called a weighted average. And it reflects both the mass and relative abundance of each isotope. All right, so the way weighted average mass is calculated, you multiply each mass by, wow, I'm really uh, batting a thousand here. This should be by its abundance. And then you add those products together. So let's uh, do an example here. All right. Carbon-12 has an abundance of 98.89%, and carbon-13 has a, an abundance of 1.11%. What that means is, in nature, 98.89% of carbon is carbon-12, and just 1.11% of carbon is carbon-13. So the way you calculate that carbon's mass number... Okay, you'll multiply 12, which is the mass of carbon 12, times its abundance. Right, we take that 98.89%, which is equal to 0 0.9889. We multiply that times 12, and we get 11.87. We take the 13 of carbon 13 and multiply it times 0 0.0111, and we get once we calculate. For significant figures, we get 0 0.114. We add those together, we get 12.014, which since this number here is only two after the decimal, we're only allowed two after the decimal in our answer, and we get 12.01. Okay, so carbon's mass number, the weighted average mass for carbon's mass number is 12.01. Zero, 01. And don't worry, we're going to be practicing a bunch of these in class. Okay, we're going to take kind of a quick look at the periodic table, just an overview, kind of a preview of the periodic table. We're going to look more at it in a couple of chapters and deal with a lot of the specifics of it. But now that we looked at the different parts of atoms, it's worth our while taking a, look, taking a quick look at the periodic table and to kind of put everything in perspective. So, the periodic table is an arrangement of elements in which the elements are separated into groups based on a set of repeating properties. So, it has to do with, as we work our way across the periodic table, you're going up in protons. As we work our way down the periodic table, we continue to go up in protons, but then we're going to be dealing with more specific things about electrons that you're going to learn over the next couple of videos. So I don't want to go too much into that part of it now. But what's nice about the periodic table allows you to compare the properties of one element or group of elements to another element or group of elements. And the two important things to remember from here about the periodic table are the, a horizontal row of the periodic table is called a period. Okay, it'll also be referred to later as a principal energy level, but we'll get more to that later. Okay, and a vertical row, right, up and down, is called a group. And the elements in a group have similar chemical properties.
Uh, so let's take a look at the periodic table. This is just a picture of the periodic table from the reference table. And we can see all these vertical things are groups. So group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, group 5, group 6, etc., 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 etc. The rows are periods, which will also be referred to later on as principal energy levels when we learn more about electrons. So in a group, like for example here, group one, lithium, sodium, potassium, et cetera, et cetera, will all behave similarly chemically, okay? And they'll have some similar physical properties as well, okay? We go all the way to the right, we look here, group 18, right? These are known as the noble gases, and they are all gases, okay? Group 17, they're going to behave similarly chemically, although physically they are a bit different, and we'll get more into that when we look closer at the periodic table. And now when we look at any one of these, right, see here's carbon, and we can see here its atomic number, which is 6. We look up here, we see its atomic mass, 12.011, and that can be seen in the sample up here. And what's nice is on the reference table, you always have this key reminding you this is the mass, this is the symbol, tells you the atomic number. Later on, we'll get to the importance of the electron configuration and oxidation states, but you, have, you guys are really fortunate in that on your reference table, you have a periodic table that tells you everything you need to know about the elements. All right, so that'll do it for 4.3. And uh, yeah, that's that. See you guys in school.